reverse mortgage calculator that you can quickly use. As we're going to talk about here today at the Heritage Wealth Planning YouTube channel, I think you'll get a lot out of this uh, because I am becoming a fan of reverse mortgages indeed. So uh, if you like what you see here, as always, uh, subscribe down below and then don't forget to hit the bell to be notified for future content. So let's dive right into this. I'm reading this book uh, from Wade Fowle, who's a PhD, a CFA, uh, all those letters. It's uh, reverse mortgages. And I've, I've been following Wade for a long time. So when he writes stuff, I uh, I listen. He's got a website. Let's go into it here uh, called retirementresearcher.com, retirementresearcher.com. And uh, in his book, he mentioned this retirement uh, re reverse mortgage calculator. And you get a lot. Of, it's just he's, I mean, tons and tons and tons of stuff on this guy's website. Big fan. I think he does work with a group called McLean Asset Management. Don't know anything about him. Uh, I, I don't know. But if Wade affiliates with a group, they're probably legit just because uh, Wade's a legit guy. All right. So let's go to his resource calculators, reverse mortgage calculator. So. Give an example. I'm working with this couple. Uh, they're both 68 years old and they need other income. They need more income. All right. So this is, and I'm going to show you on a different, when I, I'll do another video where I'd actually do a scenario with my uh, software that I use. They're trying to generate about $500 a month uh, more of income. All right. So that's what they're trying to generate. And there's, there's their options are, are somewhat limited. And so reverse mortgage seems to be a pretty good option for them. And let, so let's go over Wade's calculator. A HECM, a home equity conversion mortgage, i.e. reverse mortgage, HECM for short. Um, this is based, they changed the rules pretty thoroughly in October 2017 to make the uh, the system a lot more valid, a lot more stable, which is good. Uh, and I'll, I'll share why here in just a second. But this is updated for that, for the 2017 change. Uh, if you're looking at, I don't know what other calculators are out there, Frank. I haven't looked. If Wade writes about it and he's got a calculator out there, this would be your go-to for sure. But if you are looking at other calculators, you want to make sure it's updated for October 2017 rules. If it hasn't been, I would just refrain from using it because the rules have changed dramatically. All right, so let's go in these guys' case. Uh, again, they're both 68, and there's, that's a reason that's important. They got 130000 is their fair market value, their appraised value, however you want to say it. I'm not going to say assessed value. So you got your fair market value. Theoretically, what you could sell it for. All right. Now, that's going to be somewhat of a, it's hard to pin that down because everyone thinks they have the best home in the neighborhood. So, your fair market value in your brain might be different than your actual appraised value. Your appraised value is what a uh, supposedly a fair minded appraiser would give you for, uh, would estimate your home's value at. And they're going to look at comparables in your neighborhood, comparables through your size of the house, all that. And that's the best guessment for your value if you're not selling your house. The best guessment for your house value is someone who actually buys it. It's only as valuable as someone's actually willing to cut you a check. And that's, you know, capitalism one-on-one -on -one there. What's the value of X? Whatever someone's willing to pay for it. There's no other way around that. But because you're not trying to sell it, we have to appraise it. And that will go to part of your closing costs. And as I don't know if you've ever been through an appraisal, you got to make sure they know what they're doing. I, I Some of these appraisal companies just, it's the, uh, anyway, just be careful. All right. Uh, but it is going to come out of your closing costs for sure. All right, so we have appraised value. What's an assessed value? We're not looking at assessed value. That's what the county uses to give you your taxes on your real estate. And the, the assessed value is always going to be low because that way they can feel like they're not taxing very highly and get reelected. So just from uh, some counties, the assessed value are close to your appraised value, so the fair market value. But you're not talking assessed. Don't go to your uh, county's website the GIS, uh, uh, Geographic Information System thing, look up your property and see what their assessed value is and use that here. That, no, no, no. We want to use an appraised value. All right. So here we're going to say an appraised value of 130000 which is what they told me. They got to use a 10-year LIBOR swap rate. And the nice thing about Wade's thing, uh, he is updates automatically. So uh, this interest rate is used in the calculation to determine available credit through the HECM. Last update was 10-4-2018, which is what? Uh, that's today. So <laughs> that sucker updated last, early this morning. Wow. All right. That's good. Lender's margin. All right. This is the amount of money the lender is going to make off your debt, essentially. This interest rate would be provided by the lender as part of the terms of the proposed loan. It is generally between 2 and a quarter and 4%. It remains fixed for the duration of the loan and provides a source of revenue for the lender is using calculations for the initial available amount and the growth of principal amount. So 
just remember Lenin's margin is what they're going to, I mean, essentially what's happening is you can go to the bank and loan them, you know, a hundred thousand dollars for a one year CD and they get 2% back. They're going to turn around and loan that out to somebody for five and you know 6%. So that's the lender's margin. All right. Then there's a monthly insurance premium uh, used to support the government's insurance fund that provides guarantees to both the borrower and the lender for all loans issued at the present time, October 17th, 2017. It remains permanently fixed at 0.5%. All right. So you're going to have this monthly insurance premium, which you can't change. And that's just to keep the solvency of the fund uh, that Ginny May and FHA back to make sure that if your house is underwater, when you die, you, there is no obligation to your heirs, none whatsoever. The government will pay the difference. And that's to prop that up, which is good. You should have that. All right. In this case, Jane and Joe are 68 years old. They're both 68 at this point. And what happens is we have this principal limit factor, PLF. And let's look at what the PLF is. The principal limit uh, represents the credit capacity available for a reverse mortgage. PLFs are published by the HUD, Housing and Urban Development. Factors are updated over time to manage the risk to the insurance fund, last updated October 2017. There you go. They're calculated based on age of the borrower, again, 68, and the modified expected rate, 10-year LIBOR, plus lender's margin. So they're calculated based on them being 68 years old, and then the lender's margin and the modified effective for these right here. All right, so here's, we're taking this right here, modified effective rate, expected rate, excuse me. We're taking this guy plus that guy, all right, and we're rounding it to the, the lowest one-eighth of one percent, so it's basically it's five and a quarter. And that's our expected rate right there. Principal limit factor, your age and your expected rate, and that's gonna give you your uh, how much you can borrow against your house. Now, let's just say we say we'll say we're 78 instead of 68. Let's see what that does. 78. So you see it went to 50 percent, right, but we're 68 and went to 43 percent. Uh, let's say we're 62, which the minimum goes 39 percent. So you can see you kind of mess around here a little bit. And let's say the LIBOR rate is not. We'll say the lender's margin. We'll say 4 percent. All right. So what does that do there? 4 percent. It reduces. Uh, your principal limit factor quite a bit. All right, so let's say uh, it can even give us five percent. I guess it can, but still, is uh, let's say it's again four percent. So you can have a higher um, lender's margin by if you don't have closing costs. If you have like closing costs, if you don't want any closing costs on the loan, you can say give me a higher a rate essentially at lender's margin because yeah, they're going to make their money for sure. But that's up to you. All right, so you can say, look, I'll pay you four percent lender's margin as opposed to paying any closing costs. Now, loan origination fee, this is where people, oh, my goodness, this is a scam. The initial fee charged by the lender for processing the loan application, the maximum amount allowed to be charged is controlled by the government as a factor of the HECM eligible amount. Lenders are welcome to charge less than the maximum, the maximum amount to be charged is provided next to the box. So that's the maximum amount there, $2,600. Uh, but the input box allows the user to use the value the lender has offered. So let's just say 1000 bucks. We'll say the origination fee is 1000 bucks. Now, they can charge up to 2600 Now, other closing costs, all right? So we're going to have initial mortgage insurance is always going to be 2% of the appraised value, not 2% of the borrowing value, 2% of the appraised value, all right? So always, your appraised value is 500000 bucks. What's your uh, initial mortgage insurance? Ten thousand dollars. That's right. You got it out there in YouTube land. Ten thousand bucks is always two percent of the appraised value. Uh, other closing costs, appraisals, tightening. We talked about the appraisal, all that. So, so at the end of the day, what we have here is a one thousand dollar origination fee, two percent of mortgage insurance on top of the more a monthly insurance premium. Again, to keep the system solvent, you do not want to leave your heirs with an asset that is not worth anything that actually they owe money on. And this is what the government does. They charge you to make sure if the asset is underwater, they have the money to pay it off. And then other closing costs, appraisal title and, um, and I don't know, processing fees, the fax fees, they charge it for the pencils you use to sign the whole thing. So our total upfront costs are $6,100, all right? That's what it's gonna cost us. So $6,100, and our net available, uh, HECM is 50, because now we're not gonna pay anything out of, we're gonna pay it all out of pocket. We're not gonna finance. So our net available HECM is 57,000. So basically that's where people say it's a scam. You're taking 6,000, 57,000, 070 divided by 6,000, 
and your uh, is nine point five percent total, essentially upfront cost. Uh, you know, so that's not cheap. No other way around that. Now, if you want to finance it, let's say we're going to finance it one hundred percent. That changes. Oops. Uh, that goes to fifty thousand. So see how we did that? We're financing one hundred percent of the Heckam cost, sixty one hundred. So no out of pocket. But if we don't finance it, it's fifty seven thousand. So you get that. I am going to finance this actually one hundred because the whole point about these guys doing it is they don't have the cash flow uh, and repairs. We're not paying off any debt because they own the home free and clear. So you can actually do that right there in terms of debt. So they have fifty thousand one hundred dollars available to them. Now they can take it out as a 10 year payment or they can take it as a term payment or they don't have to take it out. In this case, you want to generate income, but try and generate $500 more a month. So if they take it as a 10 year payment, the monthly and annual amounts of 10 year payment, which is last as long as the borrower remains eligible for the loan. That says, i.e. they die or they forget to pay their property tax and they get foreclosed on. And again, it has nothing to do with the HECM, the reverse mortgage, uh, not paying your property tax. Even if you don't own a mortgage, you're going to get not foreclosed, but the county's going to come, the sheriff's going to knock on your door and put you out eventually because they're going to say, you got to pay a property tax. All right. All right. So that's the bit. So they can say, essentially say as long as they're alive, Jane and Joe, they'll get $293 a month for the rest of their life guarantee. All right. There's no, I mean, it's just, there's, there's no ish, if, ands, or buts there. They will get $293 for the rest of their life guaranteed as long as one of them is breathing, which means it's 3,700 bucks on, I think it's going to be on that amount right there. 37.17 divided by 59.70. Yeah, so it's, uh, oh, that's not right. So it's going to be on the total amount. Actually, let's see. 50, uh, yeah, it was uh, 35.17 divided by, I bet, basically 50,000. Yeah, okay. So basically, it's going to be, they can take $293 amount off that amount, but when you factor in your payout rate, it's 37.17 off the entirety of the initial balance because we're financing the loan. So it's going to be off this $57,000. $57, so essentially they get a loan of $57,000, a, a, a line of $57,000. They're taking $293 a month off it as a payout rate of 6.16, which is pretty good. Tax-free, tax-free. Now, if they want to do a specific term, 20 years, they'll get paid more uh, simply because after the term it stops. So let's click on this guy right here. The number of years you want to receive term payments, if the number of years extends beyond age 100, you would automatically be switched over to tenure, which is essentially like a lifetime annuity. So I like the uh, lifetime annuity thing here, which is a tenure payment, simply because we know as long as one of us are living, uh, that's the amount of money we're going to get. So that's, you know, we'll just say $300 a month, tax-free to these folks. And again, they need 500 so That goes a long way towards that for sure. Absolutely. In fact, if they want it, they can do a term. I mean, we could make a 15-year term. And it gives a 424. I, I, I actually, I like the 10 year one better. Now, a couple of things going on here is that this, they don't need, they can stop, they can take whatever they want. This is not, it's not like an income annuity where it's um, uh, irrevocable. They can stop, don't pay me anymore. They can pay money back if they want. They don't have to. They can do whatever they want. They can turn it on, turn it off. It's uh, completely up to them. It's completely tax free. Um, what else would I want to tell you about? Now, what happens is the line of credit actually grows as well. So basically, in theory, and I mean, I'd be hard to see how this could happen. But in theory, the line of credit could grow more than the house is worth. All right. So they could really access a whole. I mean, it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. But in theory, they could be 105 years old and their line of credit is worth $200,000. and The house is only worth 175. Absolutely could happen. The line of credit grows each and every year. Um, and I think this is uh, what I'd, I'd escape him, but I think is with that rate right there. So they're being charged that rate, 5.25 is their expected rate, but the line of credit also grows at that same amount each year. So I'm not going to say the offset because they don't, because the line of credit is just how much they have access, not a growth in terms of like you're putting a $500,000 in a portfolio and it's growing. It's just their ability to access in the future. The line of credit is growing by that amount each year, but as is the debt that they're accumulating to. So that's the reverse mortgage uh, from Wade Fowles' uh, website. I, a huge fan of this. I definitely think you should look at it. And you can just play with the numbers to a blue in the face. I love it. I, I'm a, I'm be, now again, oh, Josh, that's a scam. I got to pay $6,000 upfront cost. Yeah, because the government is going to guarantee that you cannot be underwater. And why would I, as a taxpayer who's not doing this, have to shell out the money for that? For your benefit, if you're going to go down the road of reverse mortgage, you should have to pay for that government guarantee. Use it 
I mean, it's user pays. I got no problem with that in the least. And that's what the upfront cost covers. So I'm a fan of it for sure. So let me get my phone here. Oh, hold on a sec. My phone's ringing. So I'll close that there. Hope you like it. Go to Wade's uh, website at uh, retirementresearcher.com. I think you'll get a lot out of that. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'm a huge fan of uh, engaging in reverse mortgages as a part of a strong financial plan. So comments are always welcome. Thumbs up, always help. And don't forget to go to my blog at heritagewealthplanning.com. Thanks, Dan.